Beatles fans have a lot to celebrate this morning. There are four biopics in the works, one set from each band member's point of view from Academy Award winning director Sam Mendes. Some are already referring to it as the Beatles cinematic universe. Joining me now to discuss is Ken Womack. He's a Beatles historian and expert. He's also a professor of English and popular music at Monmouth University. Good morning. Thanks so much for being with us. Good morning. What a what an interesting and strange day to be talking about the Beatles, uh, who I'm no doubt will be vying for Oscars. Wow, we're already going to go to Oscars. Okay, why do you say it's interesting and strange? Let's begin there. You bet. So it's interesting in the sense that um, the the moving picture scripted television space is a strange place for the Beatles to be, right? Mm. Um, they haven't had the most luck with those in the past with things like John and Yoko, a love story, the Linda McCartney story, the birth of the Beatles, those sorts of things. And of course, sometimes these movies get pretty campy, right? Like uh, the recent Queen or Elton John films. But on the other hand, they brought in Sam Mendes, right? Who is an Oscar winning director, a maker of really serious thought provoking films. So it, it, there's a lot to be optimistic about, but there's a lot of risk. And, and it, again, at the same time, there's a really high possibility of reward. This is the kind of thing that Apple has been doing lately and it's been working for them. Their decisions are um, I think we can pretty safely say pretty smart. Pretty smart. So I saw that Ringo Starr, at least, he's on board. Does that give you some confidence that this is going to be um, told in the right way? And of course, you mentioned Sam Mendes. Do you trust him as a director? Well, he's one of the best living directors. He was knighted a few years ago. I mean, he's uh, uh, just uh, a terrific creative force. And he's a serious filmmaker, which is what they need. This can't become campy. The Beatles are serious artists. Um, my my optimism for this uh, will certainly is buoyed by the fact that all the Beatles are on board, including the estates. That's wonderful. Um, it's, it's exciting in the sense that they have, of course, full rights to the music. What they could show us and what I can read between the lines is this kind of synchronization uh, that that Mendes is is after. And hopefully he'll be telling the making of this incredible music uh, with these four different perspectives. That would be very exciting. And of course, it's the the Beatles best calling card is always going to be the music. I mean, these guys just had a number one song in, in Great Britain, their homeland. Right. Yeah. So. Um, you know, the, there's a, a lot of risk here, but there's a really high chance of reward. And I, I'm pretty excited to see it, and I'll be rooting for them. Uh, I think Jeff Jones and the folks at Apple have been making a lot of smart decisions, um, you know, for, for quite a while now. Now they have the best product in the history of the world to yeah, deal with. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so that, that's, a, that's a big bonus. So speaking of risk, there is going to be immense pressure to find the right actor to portray each of the Fab Four. Already, there is chatter out there. Um, let's take a look at some of the people being discussed. Tom Holland as Paul McCartney, Timothy Chalamet as George Harrison, Barry Keegan might be in there somehow, Daniel Radcliffe, um, who we know, of course, famously from the Harry Potter movies. Do you have an opinion yet about who should play each Beatle? Well, you know, other than my fears that this could be campy, mm -hmm. right? This is the big fear, right? You, the Beatles are so well known. We have such a sense of them. They, you know, they've been famous since they were in their very early twenties. So, we've been with them a long time. We know them really well. We know their voices. We know their mannerisms. We even know their tics, right? I mean, it's incredible. Um, this is this is also an area that is laden with risk. Um, you know, you pick the wrong person and we won't be able to uh, become part of the illusion of the, the, the cinema experience, right? If we're falling in and out of it because somebody just doesn't look and act like Ringo or George, there will be issues, you know? So um, being able to disappear into the role is going to be a big challenge. I wouldn't be surprised if we see unknowns playing all mm. four mm. Um, simply because it's so necessary that they feel authentic. Is there a certain storyline or one Beatles perspective that you're more interested in than another? 
It's definitely the music. Um, you know, this is an opportunity to show the world how this incredible and time eclipsing music was made uh, in Abbey Road Studios. Right. I would make that my number one set. Uh, you'll have four different perspectives of how these songs are made. Uh, I think that would be their sweet spot for this. The, the, the risky areas are the private lives, right? Yeah. I mean, their scholars have disputes over what happened historically in all facets of the four Beatles lives into the present day. So um, I think that's a bit of a danger area for them. Uh, but man, you can't lose with the music. If you stay inside the making of the music, um, this could be you know, the finest kind of edutainment, right? As you watch, we saw it in Get Back uh, when Paul McCartney, the docuseries, when Paul McCartney makes up the song Get Back virtually out of thin air, you know, to be able to dramatize the making of Hey that Jude. That genius, yeah. Strawberry Fields. Yeah, that, I mean, that would be just, uh, that's great. That's great cinema. Well, thank you for reminding us that it is about the music. Um, Ken, great to have you on and chat with us about this film. I believe they're all coming out next year. I saw 2027. 2027, I'm told. Thank you, Jen. Which yes. is good because they they're going to need a lot of time yeah. to make this right. Um, and by the way, the line I just used, I want to give proper credit and attribution. That's John Lennon. He said in the, the last months of his life, when there were all those clamoring for Beatles reunions, right? He said, eh, you don't need reunions. The records, that is the thing that's going to matter. And he has been so right. John Lennon gets the final word. Thank you so much. Ken Womack, Beatles historian and expert. All the best.